So I just ran some internet speed tests over 4G, which is my current home broadband to see what the speeds are like before we upgrade to 5G and these new devices here that we're gonna be testing and comparing against one another. The current internet I have is over 4G LTE and the entire networking setup is over here. We have the actual router itself that is pinging Wi-Fi for the whole apartment. And then we have the 4G LTE hotspot with an ethernet cable going to the router. And this is the actual device that picks up the 4G connection and then pings it across to a much more powerful router. What we have here today is the Nighthawk M5 mobile router, the portable version, and then the Orbi MBK752, Wi-Fi 6 and 5G all-in-one system. And I'm currently running a speed test on my phone on 5G on an iPhone 13 Pro Max right here. And this is what we're currently getting in this area with 5G on full bars. And usually this is sometimes a bit higher, sometimes a bit lower in terms of speeds. I've seen the download go near 400 and the upload as high as I think 100. So these are, you know, decent speeds that we're getting now, but I do know for a fact that these can go a whole lot higher. Now there is of course no guarantee that if you pick up a device like the Nighthawk M5 here from Netgear or any other 4G, 5G home broadband device that I'll leave linked in the description down below for you, that you'll pull off guaranteed you know really high speeds over your 4g or 5g network this of course will highly depend on where you live in the world the actual 4g or 5g connection in your area which i highly recommend you run an internet speed test on your phone prior to investing into something like this to actually gauge whether or not you get good speeds now on your phone over 4g or 5g because i highly doubt upgrading to something like this would really boost it that much but perhaps I'm wrong. I've made quite a few videos on these sorts of devices on my channel before that I'll leave in the description down below as well on the previous generation models, the Netgear M1 and M2. And I've often gotten comments of people asking whether or not you need to pay monthly for this sort of device. Now in the UK, I'm gonna leave a really good deal for an EE 4G SIM card, the exact service I'm on, which I think is the fastest in the UK for 5G and 4G speeds. EE is a really high speed 4G, 5G cell service. You know, you can get your phone contract on them or get home broadband via a little SIM card. So you can actually get, I think like a two year prepaid SIM card for a really good deal. It works out to like 10 pound a month for unlimited data over 4G and 5G for just a little SIM card which I myself might actually upgrade to because it's cheaper than what I pay. At the moment, I've got an unlimited SIM card with this company for around 30 pound a month for unlimited data on 4G and 5G, but it's even cheaper if you get a prepaid SIM card. And once you have your SIM card, all you gotta do is pop it into the actual device and then you have the battery that comes with the device as well. We get, of course, some documentation, some warranty information and whatever else. There is also this leaflet with 4G and 5G band information. And then we have the actual back cover that I've just installed onto the device. Now it looks a whole lot more clean. It does come with about a one meter long USB type C to USB type A cable here as well to actually charge the device and the battery inside of here, you would of course plug it in via type C. It does also come with a power brick that you'd plug into your wall with a USB port on here. This is one way of powering the device. And then of course you get either your United States, your European or your United Kingdom power adapter here and you just snap that on and then plug this into the wall. It's just like a normal USB phone charger, for example. But instead of doing this, I'm gonna plug this into a USB hub I have in my networking setup, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. Ugreen and the Nexo lineup provide the fastest charge times for all your devices. The 200 watt desktop charger that I've been sent can charge two 16 inch MacBook Pro laptops from zero to 50% battery in just 30 minutes and charge the newest iPhone 14 from zero to 60% battery in just 30 minutes as well. I myself have been using their PD fast chargers all over my home for many years now since they provide the fastest charge times for my iPhone. Check them out in the first link in the video description down below and spend less time waiting around for your devices to charge. So what I'm doing here is replacing the Nighthawk M2, which I have right here with the Nighthawk M5. I've simply plugged the device in via type C as well as an ethernet cable. The ethernet cable goes to the main Wi-Fi router. I've gone ahead and configured the device. I've turned the Wi-Fi off because I do not need it pinging from this device as well when we have this big router to give Wi-Fi everywhere. However, it's not quite picking up 5G. It's kind of stuck on 4G. Um, 
several days later. It turns out that the SIM card I initially used in the Nighthawk M2, when I put it in the M5, it didn't work with 5G because this SIM card is capped at 4G LTE speeds and is not compatible with 5G. So I ended up going on Amazon and picking up a Scancom prepaid EE SIM card, which is a UK cell carrier that works out to a much cheaper monthly price as opposed to paying for this, which was costing me 30 pound a month. This new one is around 10 pound a month, which is much better. Plus you actually get 5G speeds, I can confirm, when you get one of these prepaid SIM cards from EE. They do have other carriers on here as well, not just EE on their website and probably on Amazon as well, I imagine. It is somewhat unlimited data, but if you read the actual fine print of the prepaid SIM card, you get a, some sort of 600 gigabyte per month allowance. And then I'm not sure what happens if you go above 600 gigs. Will they cut your data completely and you don't have internet? Or will they just throttle your speed significantly? If I find out, I'll let you know. It's probably not unlimited and it's probably some sort of 600 gigabyte every 30 days data cap. But it does reset every 30 days. So it's still a pretty good deal for £10 a month. At the bottom here, we have the average speed across 40 results all in the exact same location. So each one of these devices here, when I ran the speed tests, this one, that one, and you know, all of these were in the exact same spot on top of my PC case plugged in via ethernet. So Wi-Fi was not a factor in the ping, the download, all the upload speeds, everything was as stable as possible using an ethernet cable. For those of you that have watched my previous videos on the Nighthawk M2 that I'm holding right here, this device here could actually pull off just under 400 megabit download and just under 100 megabit upload two years ago in 2020 on 4G LTE, not on 5G. And in 2022, they, at least EE that I'm with, have dropped the 4G LTE speeds down on the Nighthawk M2 and even the Nighthawk M1 performed better than this two years ago, but now doesn't perform as well. The Nighthawk M2, same thing here. The top speed should actually beat the 5G Nighthawk M5, yet in 2022, the speeds that you're seeing here for the top speed results, the ping is better, I'll give them that, but the upload and download are half of what they used to be two years ago as a top speed result. Then when you go to the M5, things start to look a little bit better with an overall increase in the upload and download and then on the supposed 5G network, you know, they're a little bit better again. But still, these top speed results here are way behind from what they used to be two years ago. This thing managed to pull off like 390 on the download and like 90 on the upload two years ago, whereas now on 5G, the speeds are worse. But perhaps this Orbi all-in-one home Wi-Fi 6 and 5G system will turn things around and deliver, hopefully, a better result. Okay, I've opened this thing up. Let's take everything out of here. Right, yes, this opens up. We, of course, get a whole load of documentation. Included in the box, we have the European adapter for both the router and the satellite. I'm using the UK one, so I've got all of these set up, just two power cables, one for the satellites, one for the router itself. And then you also get a flat Cat5e ethernet cable. In terms of connectivity options, we have the router right here with three ethernet ports that are all gigabit. Two of them have link aggregation support and one of them, the yellow one, is a LAN slash WAN port. Over on the left and right, we have two antenna ports for an optional 5G antenna or like satellite dish to pick up better 5G signal, but that is optional and is not included. There's also a SIM card slot for a 5G nano SIM and of course the actual power port over there as well. On the side, there's a sync button to I'm guessing sync it up with the satellite, which also has a sync button over there as well. You do get the actual Wi-Fi name and password with a QR code included on the front of the router that you can peel off. And you also get an additional QR code. So if you have any guests come over, they can just scan the QR code and join the Wi-Fi really, really easily without you having to spell them out this long Wi-Fi password. Scanning a QR code is a much easier way of going about things. For those that are interested in the actual technical information and specs of this Orbi 5G Wi-Fi 6 system, Everything is listed over on the back of the box here. So feel free to pause the video and have a look yourself to make sure that this is a product that you'd be happy with buying as well. I think without further ado, let's plug this thing in, put a SIM card in here 
and see what kind of speeds we can pull off. Okay, I believe I've installed the SIM card. <laughs> I've plugged the device in and there is a white LED that is now flashing on and off. Okay, so when you first get this device, you have to go to orbilogin.com and in my case, I've plugged in the 5G SIM card. It says, EE, your signal strength is excellent. Set up Orbi satellites. Yeah, I may as well do that. I have plugged in both of them. Oh, it actually found one without me having to press the sync buttons. Now it's asking me if I wanna set up a new wireless network name as well as password. For now, I'm gonna just leave it on the default password and wireless network SSID that it came with. So the device is all set up. It just restarted after we first set it up. So the internet kind of went down for a minute and then booted back up. We have excellent signal strength on the 5G-NSA mode, which is, it's sounding a bit dodgy, but hopefully that means very fast mode, okay? Without further ado, let's hit the speed test and see what we can pull off. Now, I'm not expecting anything too impressive given how the 5G speeds were earlier. Hey, that's pretty good. We're off to a good start. That nearly just set. I think this might be the fastest speed we've hit before. Hey, that's not bad. I'm actually impressed. I did not think I was gonna be impressed. That's actually good. I'll be honest, I actually thought this device would not perform even 1% better than that Nighthawk M5. Let's run another speed test. This is over Wi-Fi as well. So this is the fourth test I'm running right now. And let's see if it pulls off near the 300 megabit mark again. It's really close. This is already looking to be a big improvement in stability of the speeds over the Nighthawk M5, which really seemed to be all over the place. It almost seemed that this device was perhaps overheating when I was running these speed tests. I'll run 40 of these tests back to back and I'll see how it compares to the rest of these devices here. One eternity later. Many more speed tests later and we have much more data now. So we have iPhone 13 Pro Max results in 4G mode as well as in 5G mode. And then of course we have the new Orbi system with a 4G SIM card, the previous one I had before, and using the new 5G SIM card. And as you can see, in terms of an overall clear best result, the Orbi system, both in the average figures and in the overall best result possible, it is a clear winner right here. When we take a look at the 4G only results, once again, we have a clear winner here being the Orbi MBK752 system, being slightly ahead in the download and quite a bit ahead in the upload with an overall best latency result here as well. And when we go over to the 5G only results, once again, we have a very, very clear winner being the MBK752 system from Netgear by far getting the best ping. So here we have the actual average figures, then we have the top speed figures for both 4G and 5G across all Netgear devices. If you're in a situation where fiber optic broadband is not available in your area, or it's just terribly slow, and going for a 4G or 5G setup is perhaps a way more cheaper option and or perhaps a much faster option as well, going for one of these devices could be worthwhile. Thank you very much for watching as always. I would like to give a shout out to Netgear for providing the Orbi system as well as the Nighthawk M1, the M2 and the Nighthawk M5 for me to test in today's video using the EE 4G and 5G networks. Massive shout out to them for providing all this stuff because without them, this video would not have been possible. And if you wanna go buy any of these devices or at least check the pricing for one of these things in your own country, all the product links are linked in the video description down below and the links should take you to your country on Amazon and show you the pricing for one of these kits. If you are looking to perhaps better your home broadband situation and make it be a little bit faster, it could be something to look into, especially if you don't have fiber optic broadband available in your area or it's just really slow. But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope to see you in another video soon.